Welcome to the State of Aesthetics podcast. I'm your host, Austin Podolsky, a med tech entrepreneur with over a decade of acquisition, liquidation, and development of the latest technology applied to the fields of plastic surgery, dermatology, and med spas. We're here to give you a look behind the curtain at Industry Insights, crack down on the manufacturer, the business of aesthetics, and the technology that fuels results. This is the State of Aesthetics Podcast. First, a word from our sponsors. Technology moves fast. Synergy Med Sales moves faster. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are looking to expand your menu of services, I encourage you to check out their marketplace as it pertains to a wide array of technology offered by top tier manufacturers in the space at up to 60 and 80% discounts from manufacturers pricing. Synergy Med Sales is the resource for you, offering consulting services, training, service, and support. If you're looking for a great deal on a certified pre-owned laser, It's Synergy. Shop them now. Do you know how to sell? Do your providers know how to sell? Can't sit in every consult? I'm talking about Optic Slim Advanced Aesthetic Imaging, the simplest way to standardize the consult. Before and afters have never been more important to the aesthetic practice. Use UV, polarize, and standard flash to document results, retain patients, and upsell products and services. Check out OpticSlim.com and schedule a demo. If you have a product that is no longer generating income for your business, there's no better a time to sell than now. Check out medxtrade.com for a fast, easy, and seamless appraisal process to remove that asset from your balance sheet. I'm talking cash offers, consignment, and trade up. medxtrade.com. Okay, let's kick it off. And we've got a couple people already popped in. Thanks for tuning in, guys, to the State of Aesthetics podcast. I am your host, Austin Podolsky. Today, we have the beautiful Dory Sukup of Pay Dota Beach here with us. She's with a group called Inspiration Management. No doubt, a fantastic resource for any of you in the aesthetic space, whether you're an entrepreneur or you've been in the space for some time. Dory, thank you so much for being my guest today. Oh, it's my pleasure. So excited to be with you here, Austin. Absolutely. How's the, how's the, the weather in Florida? Have you been hitting the beach? I actually, I'm looking over the beach right now. I'm sitting in my condo overlooking the Atlantic. It's absolutely gorgeous today. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, as we kick it off here, uh, this episode, episode four with Dory Sukup, is about trends as well as the med spa entrepreneur community and what they're doing uh, from a, a COVID standpoint on re-entry and the best strategies for that re-entry. Dory has been covering this very heavily. She is a, a speaker. Uh, she is also a business coach. So she spends a lot of time actually personally interacting with med spa owners, typically in seminar fashion or at shows. And, and now her entire business is really tilted digitally. And with what she's learned from, from how established her, her media accounts, her YouTube accounts were already, is to go teach that to some of, of her uh, clientele. So she'll be talking to the, us about that today. Dory, before we, we really get going on the topics at hand, I've known you for probably two decades. No, I'm sorry, two years now. You've been Feels in, like in, two in the, decades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you've been, you've been, exactly. But I don't know anything about you. I know, I know how good you are at, at consulting, uh, but I don't know anything really personally about you. Um, so you got to do tell more. I mean, I looked up your bio. I saw you had two decades in hospitality, ending as a, a VP of a of a nice uh, resort chain and franchise. But tell me more. What brought you to aesthetics? How did you start? You know, what what turns you on to that? Sure. So after, like you said, almost two decades in the hospitality industry. Though I climbed my way up the corporate ladder, you know, once I reached the VP level, I just felt like I hit that glass ceiling that people talk about. And I decided, okay, I can't go any further. I wanted to become a regional VP, but it was not going to happen. So I decided, okay, it's time to retire and go do something else. So that entrepreneurial bug kind of bit me. And I decided, okay, enough of having a job for someone else. Let's go into business for yourself now. And as you know, I've always been passionate about education and training and developing people. So I figured why not do what I love most? 
So I decided to open up my own consulting firm. So I started ever so humbly with one office, one assistant. And now we have an office space that's 7,500 space in beautiful Daytona. I have a team of 14 people. Uh, we have a very nice, uh, successful business. And I haven't looked back, Austin. I love being self-employed. <laughs> it's very uh, challenging but rewarding for sure. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So when you were in the hospitality community, did you did you already look into med spas for them or, or into their day spas? And did you start looking at more aesthetic technology? What kind of introduce you to this type, this sector of the market? Yes. So at the resort, I've always been a spa junkie. I've always gone, got my facials and my massages and things. Back then it was mainly day spa, right? After I left, a company, uh, Pavonia actually reached out to us. Their, core, their corporate office is here in Daytona and I was living in Orlando at the time. And they called up and said, why don't you come and do some internal training for our team? So I went to Daytona, did internal training. And I was just so intrigued by what the spa industry was all about. And uh, I started discovering the challenges that they have. And I thought to myself, boy, that's an industry I can definitely make a difference in. So Pavonia started sending me all around the world. I've been to over 30 countries, every state in the United States except for two. And uh, I just started going different places and I kept seeing everywhere I went, Austin, it seemed like everybody had the same challenges. Right. So I would come back home, I would come up with systems, structures, strategies, and uh, solutions, I call them the four S's, and I started implementing them. And sure enough, I started seeing these great results. So I'm like, okay, I'm onto something here. So before I knew it, I had an entire business model for medical spas and spas to really operate their business successfully and elevate their success. Because a lot of people are already successful, they just want to even be more successful. So whether yeah. it's a turnaround or starting from scratch, there, these are things that we can definitely uh, offer solutions for. And so uh, really quickly, when did you enter this, enter this space of, of aesthetics and consulting more on the spa level? Been, it's been 19 years. So that's my like second. It's almost time to go now. <laughs> Dory, it's time for a drink. Guys, just to remind you, this is the virtual aesthetic happy hour. I'm your host, Austin Podowski. I want to make a quick toast and cheers to you guys. What, why, didn't you, why didn't you tell me that before? I could have had a glass of wine. <laughs> Oh, go get one. I'm drinking. I'm drinking tea instead. <laughs> oh, oh, you know me. I'll keep talking. You can get up and get a glass of wine. Uh, that's fine. I'm just kidding. It's okay. So, so the, the the podcast is the state of aesthetics. We host it Fridays right now uh, during the virtual aesthetic happy hour, which is one of the digital strategies that we took on to engage our audience, our clientele. Um, and, and bring them the latest and greatest on, on industry trend, et cetera. So before we get into trends and what your customers have been able to do during this time, let's, let's go back to, you know, when you entered the space, right? And let's, let's look at what did the med spa community look like at that time? So um, from, from what I understand, some of the OEMs or, or manufacturing entities out there that started um, in Israel and over into the US, like, like ESC, which spawned Luminous, Cyton, et cetera, um, and then eventually Cineron, you had med spa experiments kind of popping up with Francis, uh, who started the the Candela Medical Spa, you know, almost about 19 years ago. Um, and then from a physician standpoint, it was it was heavily derm at the time, from what I understand, unless unless it was at a, a, a blade of hand piece uh, for surgical cutting. You even had, I mean, you had uh, chiropractors in the space. So the the founders um, of, uh, you know, Ideal, you had, you know, Ricky and, and, and Joe that had come into the space and, and those guys were really entrepreneurs. So you had kind of a full mix, right? Physicians, non-core entrepreneurs, kind of that all kind of kick this off. What was your original client roster like compared to the you know 21st century right client roster that you now have? Well, I've noticed a big difference, and of course, the growth in the medi spa sector has been unbelievable. The whole scenario has changed quite a bit, actually, with all now every kind of doctor is trying to open up a med spa because they all want that cash business rather than dealing with all the insurances. So we have seen a huge shift, whether it's 
emergency room doctors, uh, cardiologists, gynecologists, you name it, every kind of doctor are opening up now, of course, medical spas. So even our model has shifted quite a bit where before we had a lot of, like you said, wellness centers, chiropractors, uh, some derms, some plastics, and of course, day spas, where for the last 10 years, our business has shifted quite a bit to be modeling a business model for actual med spas that are owned by doctors or entrepreneurs with medical directors. So there has been definitely a big shift into the medical arena. Yeah, I mean, I, I think at least from what we see in our business, right, we've never done more consultations for new entry to the space. And, and those are fun consults, especially, you know, for Synergy, who is a sponsor of this podcast, certified pre-owned equipment. And, and so when people call us, we don't have that bias. We're able to kind of consult them through multiple technologies. You know, it, I think it is a, a nice comprehensive look at, at how they could build, you know, their space. And whether they purchase with us or new, um, the point I'm getting at is it's mostly new people that are uneducated on this equipment, have to break this equipment, relying on a medical director and hiring already experienced statisticians. What they have an, a, an expertise on, or at least a passion for, is business. And that's, that's where you come in, right? And that's why I like to refer people to you, Austin, because you're non-biased, exactly, because if somebody wants to open up a new place, uh, I like sending them to you because then you can give them that nice overview of all the different options. Then they can make an intelligent decision on which way to go. But it's amazing to me, though, how many people don't do their homework. They just go out and, you know, buy a laser. Let's spend 200000 <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it does. It makes a big difference to have you to navigate helping people through the opening with the options of the different equipment that they can have. So when, when somebody calls you, how, how novice, how researched, how much diligence have they actually done prior to trying to enter the space? No, not much. What we're finding a lot of people, because I speak at quite a bit of the clinical educational conferences, that's where we find a lot of the people that are just entering the field, right? So they all they're doing right now is basically studying how to do injectables, studying how to do weight loss programs, bioidentical hormones. So we find them usually just starting their education and then navigate through what equipment do I need? What product line? What's the business model I'm going to implement? And when we get them so green like this, it takes time to really have them understand all the things that are involved and actually open up a, opening up a medical spa. So it does, it, it's very, very, a lot of green people, Austin, a lot. Yeah, and so, I mean, that's that's a core of your business is, is hosting these people in a room together and kind of walking them through how taxing this investment can be, how to set up that business, how to market for it, et cetera. Very interesting. So as you've seen this increased entry in the recent years, and, and we've talked about that, that roster changing, is that stemming regionally? Or are you seeing more resurgence, you know, in the Northeast, the West Coast, um, Texas, Southeast, you know, are, is your client base, you know, centralized to must win markets? Or? We actually are, we're going global, Austin. We have people like all of these webinars we've been doing, Literally, we've had people from every corner of the world. It's been crazy, the outreach of the knowledge that people are seeking and want to learn. So to us, as far as the U.S., definitely Texas, your state, <laughs> is probably number one for us, yes. <laughs> and then, of course, the Northeast is second, and then California or the West. But uh, we are seeing a huge spike with international, though. That's that's really what's um, kept Synergy going through quarantine um, is, is stay in business with those active international purchase orders and, and supplying them. So we're very fortunate to have an international customer base as well. So it, it's kind of, you know, you've seen it in Texas, but you're seeing it globally. It's, it's not just secular to, to here in North America. What are some of the misconceptions that some of these people have when they're calling Oh my goodness. They think they can do it all without a guide, without a consultant or someone expert like you. They think that, oh, it's just so easy. I'm going to go ahead and open up. So um, mistakes that they make so many times is lack of planning, like 
don't have a business plan. They, they're not clear exactly. A lot of them don't even do like a feasibility study or even come up with financial planning. Like this is how much it's gonna cost me. Like I would ask someone, you know, what budget do you have in mind to open up a place? And they really have no idea or what is, what is it going to take to actually open up the place. A lack of understanding on the marketing that needs to go into the whole planning process. So from a business plan to a marketing plan to how to pay the team members. Like I have no idea how should I pay everyone and how should I position my company and what menu should I offer? What are the treatments? So really everything that needs to take place, they don't, we're starting to see it more and more. Now people are realizing, you know what, maybe I can't do this all by myself. I do need some help. So it's, it's almost an attraction from non-core positions for a cash pay model outside of insurance as a bolt onto the business. And then for entrepreneurs, it's sexy. Like it's sexy. I want to own, I want to own a med spa, right? Absolutely. We just had someone call our office yesterday, for example, it was a husband and a wife. He owned a gym and she wanted to open up a medical spa. And again, like they were so non-informed, they really need a lot of help. And it's very interesting to me how many people are in that boat right now and they are seeking out. You know, it's funny, Austin, I just finished the book gathering with Tara this afternoon. We just did our webinar and we're going over Think and Grow Rich, the book by Napoleon Hill now for our book gathering. And the first chap chapter is thoughts are things, right? And are very powerful. And one of the things, um, one of the stories in that chapter was about the Darby brothers who went digging for gold way back then. And they found the gold, but then the vein dried up. So what happened is they sold all the equipment to a junk man. They left. They went back home. They gave up. They quit. So the junk man went and hired an engineer to tell him where they stopped. And they tur it turned out that they stopped three feet from the gold. And needless to say, the junk man became extremely wealthy. And the reason he became wealthy is because he hired an expert to come and give him an assessment for what was going on with the digging of the gold. So the engineer came and found that they stopped three feet from the gold. It just goes to show you that it's so important to ask for expert advice like yours or a firm like mine or others. I would give an advice for all the people that are thinking about starting to avoid costly mistakes and be able to get to success the fastest way possible. And if you wanna do that, you really need a guide. You need a person to take you through the process and show you how to do it. Absolutely. So anyway, if you wanna see that book gathering, you can go to um, inspirationmanagement.com and be able to download it from there. It'll probably be posted tomorrow. For um, misconceptions, when people call you, misconceptions are, this is easy, I could buy a laser and start, right? But, but that's just not the case. No, and they still operate under the old adage, uh, you know, build it and they'll come. Like they'll wait to, open, to even launch their website or they'll wait to actually do any marketing. Oh, I'll do it once I open. Or uh, they'll say, oh, I'm opening. Do you have a logo? Do you have a website? Do you have anything? No, well, get started. So those are some of definitely misconceptions. Yeah, absolutely. And so budget wise, some people you've mentioned come to you with a budget, some don't have a budget. What is the expected kind of budget if you're looking to, to move into the space? I mean, is there a range that you usually see your coach? Absolutely. So it depends on whether they're going to buy lasers or not. So you can open up a cute little boutique med spa for about 250,000. That's including like a build out, decorations, products, maybe some smaller pieces of equipment like what you have, whether it's a hydrafacial, maybe a simple little thing. So once you get into the lasers, then you're talking a half a million and up, depending again on how many rooms they want to start with. So really it all depends. And then we've had some people, Austin, where they would start with only, you know, one room renting from like a high-end day spa or a doctor's office. And some of them like to start that way and then they move up and open up bigger places. 
So there's all sorts of models that people can follow. Just because they don't have a, a 500,000 or a million or two million doesn't mean that they can't get started. They can get started on a smaller scale. Yeah, so you said initial investment a quarter million and you could get going with kind of a, a basic uh, med spa, doing some facials, maybe some injectables, depending on your state regulation if you have a medical director. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And, and, and so at a quarter million dollar entry to the space, you know, what's the timeline to profit? What's the expected, you know, gross profit margin net EBITDA on a business like that? Just from what you've seen. Yeah. So again, it depends on how they structure the whole thing or whether they're working with someone that gives them a proven model or not. So if they're just going out and trying to figure things out on their own, so good luck. It might be uh, two years, three years before they turn profit where if they start smart from the beginning, implementing systems and structure that we know work, then they're going to be able to succeed a lot faster. So if they position themselves right, if they market properly, if they have a good menu, if they don't compete on price and position themselves truly as an expert, then they're gonna be able to draw people to them. You know, one thing I teach Austin is the difference between pull marketing and push marketing. A lot of people go out and they think they can just push themselves on people and they're going to make money. Well, you know, that will work to a certain extent. But the wiser way to do it is if they get very smart on educating themselves, they become these great injectors or doctors or whatever treatment they want to be great at or their team. Right. Then they're going to be able to attract people to them, the right people, and be able to turn profit a lot faster. But the, the biggest problem I see is the price war games. You know, people want to, like, how cheap can I get? <laughs> but if they play those price war games, then they're not going to be profitable because they're depleting their profit. I know physicians that charge $10,000 for cool sculpting, for full body cool sculpting or sculpture, right? You know, and they charge maybe that amount to go into the OR or maybe 15 to go to the OR to a rhino or something. Breast dogs are like seventy five hundred bucks. So, if you're if you're validating, you know your clinical protocol, your brand properly, you should have no problem charging and not having to go to Groupon. And I mean, even some of these manufacturers, right? You in your sales agreement, you sign that you're not allowed to market through Groupon, and sometimes they'll help you price that. Now, now I'm not saying that they're making people sign agreements for price setting, but they have a recommended or suggested, or they don't want to see it advertised below a certain amount. And so I think it's great. So you're teaching your clientele, drive value, use pull marketing. And I love push pull compound movements that'll keep you fit. And, you know, from, from that, they're able to, to not have to worry about dropping the, the price of Botox files so aggressively or, or, or whatnot. So talk to me about, um, the factor at play as it pertains to location and the new entry to the space that you're seeing. Are you seeing these entrepreneurs come to the space and open, you know, retail stylized spaces, or are we going back to more traditional medical office parks, et cetera? And is there a difference in the level of clientele or clientele spend of those business owners, those med spa owners? Uh, between a retail setting and, and more of a, a medical office park. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going leaning more, especially for a medical spa, because it's more, uh, you get some walk-in traffic. If you're in the retail area, you're going to get better exposure. People are going to know who you are. They're going to drive by. I mean, of course, retail is always better than a, a medical building. Or if it's a standalone building, we have a lot of clients that actually build their own buildings. And that's very nice. If they're in a situation to do that, of course, that's ideal. Uh, you own your building. I own my building. We love owning our own space, right? Instead of renting. And you have a beautiful office and it's great. And, you know, we do too. And if they can do a standalone or retail, to me, it's going to cut down their marketing costs. That way they don't have to work so hard to let people know where they are. With the temperament around retailers and people in stores, big box stores, a surge of curbside, et cetera. Do you think that that approach is affected, you know, as, as far as that, that same exposure, that foot traffic, is it still going to be there? Right. I mean, I've read stats and reports on consumerism, et cetera, that say in 10 years, we're not going to have shopping malls. 
my wife, I think, is a big online shopper, but we like the experience of going to the outdoor mall or, or taking the girls to the mall, right? Our, our young children, even if we're buying online. So do you think that, you know, and that was that was kind of the mindset, you know, pre-COVID is reports were saying could be 10 years that you're going to see m- much fewer shopping malls. Well, now that COVID's happened, are we going to see most businesses shift to online and curbside? I mean, are people still going to, you know, go to those settings? Actually, as soon as this striked Austin, that's the first thing we did with all of our members is we taught them how to shift their entire business online. They all, if they didn't have a shopping cart right away, we got a shopping cart. They all started doing online consultation. They all started doing webinars like what we're doing and connecting back with their clients. They're doing the curbside uh, pick up like you're talking about where they're selling the retail products and people are actually coming and picking them up curbside or they're shipping it to them. So I would definitely to secure any business now moving forward, they should think of their business as two different legs. One that's an online profitable leg and then the other line is in person. So God forbid if we can't you know, go back to normal as quickly as we think, then they still have a way to generate revenue. If they have not done that already, they're crazy. They're behind the eight ball already. So they need to start going. They need to get that online business going. And I think that's probably one of the the big trends right now, especially for med spa owners is online, 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 right? Um, Having that store, I think that's one of the, you know, smartest things you said is get a shopping cart. Just because you're a physician does not mean that you don't need an e-store right? Even if it's for a hat or a t-shirt, right? You have to build that brand and that experience, you know, that, that people want to be proud of. So I think that's very smart. And, and obviously telemedicine has been big right now during COVID. I see that becoming a mainstay as we come out of COVID for a lot of industries, um, certainly for that initial consult. A lot of physicians were already doing, you know, consults online with their patient base that were, you know, further from the office or international, et cetera. And so I think that's been pretty seamless, but we know there's little that you can do over a teleconsult. I keep saying a, a scalpel, a handpiece cannot go through your iPhone and give you a treatment, right? And so outside of um, retail, what other, you know, trends are, are business owners taking to, to great productivity, you know, whether it be management of their staff or go ahead. Yeah, so what we did is we launched an entire do-it-yourself series for all of our clients where we created webinars and taught people at home how to do a facial at home, how to do a peel at home, how to take care of yourself, how to build up your immune system. So we did all these do-it-yourself series and people were buying things like crazy. Like I have clients, Austin, they were complaining about shipping fees because they were shipping so much product doing these strategies. That's problems I have. And I ship lasers that are, you know, <laughs> I know. the size of refrigerators and weigh 400 pounds, right? Exactly. Nobody wants I'm to like, pay that's shipping. A problem Amazon. To Thank Jeff God. Bezos. <laughs> and I'll tell you, and I have also like plastic surgeons and other doctors who are doing consultations, like selling $20,000 facelift on a webinar like this and it's crazy i'm telling you but so is that money coming in the door today or is that realized when we do the procedure oh yeah they they left the deposit and then set up a monthly payment to come in and get a facelift later on uh, they've done fat transfer uh, fat transfer sales i mean they're making i have people that are still profitable now austin it's nuts that how much they're selling that's fantastic so you know what what have, I've been hearing with an ear to the ground lately uh, from physicians is when can I, I can open my practice again, whether it's now or within the next couple of weeks, most people are going to be able to open their, their med spas or their practices again. Super exciting. Great for you guys. Hopefully you did the nitty gritty, got down, got creative, built some of these channels for e-commerce, built some of these channels for, for engaging with your customers online, digitally, YouTube, Instagram, et cetera. But, out, but outside of that, some of these physicians are saying, okay, I open my practice, but can I get in the OR? Is it safe to get in the OR? Does everybody in the OR need a COVID test? Do they need an antibody test, right? So most of the clientele that I work with, most of the clientele that you work with are more in the non-invasive sector. Though we both work with physicians um, or, or plastics, et cetera, I don't think that affects them as so much, but I was interested from, from some of your, your, your plastic clients 
what is their mindset around opening the R? When is it safe to do a breast aug, to do a rhinoplasty, to actually do that fat transfer that they've sold? So they, you know, they, they, they book a 20 K for surgical procedure. They get four installments, half down, et cetera. When are they going to realize that full, you know, that full profit into the business? Yeah. Um, I haven't heard any of my plastic surgeons that are opening yet. Um, I know a lot of them opened up, of course, their medical spa, but they haven't quite opened up the plastic surgery side yet. Um, yeah. I think that would be a little while before they actually start. However, dentists are, have, are open now. They're doing procedures. I have a dentist appointment next week for a cleaning, and they're all open. So they're taking their precautions. I'm actually very proud of people, Austin, because it's amazing to me how people are finding ways to just still go forward and overcome the challenges that we have right now. Like, did you notice how quickly car dealerships went online selling cars? Oh man. It was like, it was like immediate almost, immediate, we'll deliver the car to you. So, so many industries are just modifying things that it's, they still gonna do business, they're just gonna do it a little bit differently. So same thing with our industry. We're still going to make money. We're still going to help people. It's just going to be different. And that's what people need to learn is how to do business differently and still be profitable. But you know what, Austin, the one thing that is saving all my clients is the reoccurring revenue and saving me because I have memberships too. So what's saving them? Yes. So anybody now, if you don't have a membership now, when you reopen, you better get off your high knee and get a reoccurring revenue model. You have to have memberships. And when you have a membership, when you get a hiccup like this, the money is still coming in. So even if a small percentage say, put my membership on hold, they can put it on hold, but then they can still continue with all the other people that are still being charged on a monthly basis. So it makes a big difference. So how, how does, you know, how do you coach somebody on setting up a membership? Is it menu of services wide or is it just on injection, um, just on skincare, just on facials? No, it's uh, for treatment. So we just came up with a brand new program for the VIP memberships and we did it in a way where it's totally customized. So we came up with a personal image fund that everybody has. So we did some research to find out how much are people averaging a year uh, spending money in a med spa. So I had everybody do that exercise to find out what the price bracket should be. So we came up with three different levels. The highest one, let's say, is 500 and the lowest, let's say, is 150. And then what we did is we set it up where they pay monthly but everything is customized. So let's say you're gonna end up spending $6,000 a year in a med spa. So I can sit right. down with you, break that up into 12 payments, and then I'll create an entire program for you for the whole year that will include the different treatments that you need and that are ideal for you. So they're all launch launching this now because we even improved what the membership used to be. Because before it was like, oh, come and get a facial or come get Botox. Now they can get whatever they want. So I love it. I can't wait to see the results from that. So it's kind of like an all-in-one. They're buying an a annual membership into... Divided up into monthly payments, but you have that nice reoccurring revenue coming in. That's, I mean, that's great advice. And if you want to learn more about how to set up a membership, how to build out an actual business plan for your med spa and stop shooting from the hip, you need to check out inspirationmanagement.com. That is Dory's company. She is a business coach, a business consultant, and she's just a beast with it. So guys, check out Inspiration Management if, if you're in the med spa game. It will, it will change your business uh, um, undoubtedly. Okay, so I wanted to get back to something really quickly. So we have med spas opening. You work with a lot of injectors. So whether it's, you know, toxins, fillers, et cetera. I saw a, a doc had come out with like a, a nose plug and like a mouth breather so that they could do injections. So how are people going to do injections with masks, right? Is that something that you've had to deal with? Or if those questions come up from some of your clients, what, what's, the, what's the beat on the street? So I, I mean... They're trying to where the, the therapist or the injector or whoever is doing is always wearing the mask. Now, of course, if somebody wants the lip done or they want fillers done, of course, the mask has to go. 
what a lot of my clients are doing now is they're restricting only to Botox. So mainly in the forehead, the eyes. So they're still wearing the mask. They have not removed the masks all the way. And they're just doing basically Botox for right now. So I don't know how they're going. I would like to hear more about the person you're talking about. What is that exactly? It was, it was Dr. Uh, Weiner. He's a, he's a physician that does a lot with um, the chin from a surgical standpoint. And he's got a nice little med spa. He won um, an aesthetic uh, show award, I, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago. But anyway, yeah, I saw he had posted a nose clip and then like this uh, mouth apparatus that contained the moisture in the air so that, you know, the injector could get close and not breathe or contaminate the air around. Okay, cool. So get, just getting back on track here. Um, so memberships are super important. Um, we've talked about the value of marketing. Are there anything that you're seeing, you know, your clients do to manage their team out of the office, right? Like, how do we know? that our providers as a med spa owner are being productive? How do we know that we're selling? How do we know that they're engaging? You know, I'm in the sales team. You better be on the phone, right? Like ABC, baby, smile and dial. Like that's the name of the game for us. But how do med spa owners keep track of injectors, laser techs? Yeah, so here's, um, here's what we did. We actually came up with an entire sales process for reserving consultations. So what we did is we did an entire campaign to actually get people to reserve consultations. We started out with seasonal skincare consultations, the do-it-yourself I mentioned, all in-depth consultations. So people were reserving consultations and then the managers were giving out the consultations to their team members. So every day team member knows exactly how many consultations they need to do and they're all done on Zoom so they can track and see whether they did them, how they did them. We used it for training so we can see how they're doing. And then we track closing ratio. How many consultations did you do? How many did you actually close? They actually generated a sale. And what is the average per sale price for people? We have people that are averaging like $2,000 a day in just retail sales. Now, a company, uh, company-wide, company MedSpa-wide organization or individual? Like a person, like a person. Like if I have a few consultations a day and I you have, have five girls, people, you're, that's you're how doing much 10K they're in revenue a day. Yeah, Still. it's crazy. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, if they have the model in place. So you need to have that machine rolling where people are actually reserving a consultation. Because if they're not reserving and you don't have that machine humming, then you're not going to have your team doing anything. They're just going to be sitting at home twirling their thumbs. So the whole idea sure. here is to get the people busy, to get your team busy. That way they're making money for themselves and they're making you money at the same time. And they're doing it from home. So we taught them how to work from home. We gave them the presentation on exactly how to do the consultation, how to close, how to be successful. So they're happy making money and the business owners are happy because money is still coming in. So that's fantastic. I mean, a couple of nuggets for you guys. Uh, E-commerce, super important for your website. Uh, another one for you, to put KPIs, key performance indicators around your staff when you're not in office with them and interacting with patients directly is, is to put them into a commissionable role and on a program, a platform for them to be conducting consults themselves and generating revenue for the business. And so I would assume that never more than bef the before now, you are actually not just interfacing with the business owner, but your content's hitting their full staff. Oh yeah, that. we're actually You're doing right, training. Right? So all of our members, our mastermind members, we've been doing webinars with them every single day. And some of them are for team members to teach their team members how to handle the new business model. And then the rest of the time is for the leaders. So we have done, uh, Austin, I have done, I think, almost 50 webinars in, since the coronavirus broke out. That's how much work. I've been busier than ever before. I need a vacation, Austin. <laughs> Wait, so you live on the beach. So do you go to the mountains for a vacation or what do you Anywhere do? Anywhere else, yeah. But tomorrow, I, my son is here today, so I told him, is, is it going to be nice tomorrow so we can go sit on the beach for a little bit, but it's going to be rainy. Um, is that your only son? He's my only son. He's 23, just graduated with a biochemistry degree. Ooh, finger claps. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. 
he spent his last year, he was going to University of Florida, but then he went to uh, Melbourne for one year in Australia. Wow. And finished his yeah. education there. Yeah. So he's very smart. Thank God he takes after me. No. Okay. So was he in Australia and he's back home from school and he's done? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's done. Yeah, he graduated. So he, um, he almost got stuck over there. Yeah, almost. Before COVID. Yeah, so he's excited. He's here now trying to decide what he wants to do. That's exciting. So, is he, And he's staying with you there in Daytona? Uh, he goes between our house in Orlando and our condo in Daytona. So he spends some time here and some time in Orlando. Gotcha, gotcha. I, di I didn't know you had a son. That's fantastic. Is he going to follow your footsteps? I mean, I know he's got a different degree, but... He wants nothing to do with business. He's seen you work very hard. That's why, that's why he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> that's right. That's fantastic. Congratulations to him and, and all the best getting out there into the, into the workforce. So we've talked about how to manage our staff, how to be effective during this time, generate revenue. You've said you've, you've seen some, not record revenue per se, but like record revenue take into account the circumstances scenario. How does that compare with like typical run rates? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, for, for your clients? Is there a slight decline for these guys or have some of them been able to, to be consistent? Yeah, the, the ones that had the membership are still profitable. I mean, they're still maintaining. If they don't have the membership, then they're feeling more pain. But thank God that most of our members have membership. As far as the retail sales, frankly, Austin, some of them are doing better now with retail sales because we have a real focus on it. It, it became a main, yeah, a main source of income versus a silo, right? Other other treatments that you think are um, trending or hot or going to be hot or trending coming out of COVID. You know, what kind of menu of services are you trying to coach these people on in the case that they're going to be seeing fewer patients at a time? Mm -hmm. So one thing I really want to focus with them on because that would be a good way to get people in is you know, the whole wellness component, the immune system, being healthier, eating healthier, because this is what I'm planning for my members, Austin. God forbid if we get back into this situation, what I want to teach them how to do is coaching for their, for their actual uh, members or clients so we can teach people into how to take care of themselves, how to eat better, how to live healthier, how to have a better immune system. So you can really take care of yourself. And that can be all done online. So you can have a separate uh, revenue stream, even if you're closed. So that's really my whole goal right now is to come up with other revenue streams that they can generate online. So God forbid, if we can't open again, then you can still have some kind of a business going on. So I want to take that telemedicine component and turn it into cash telemedicine. That's really what I want to do. And I think if we do that, oh my gosh, it's going to be such a great uh, thing for everybody involved. But that's definitely something that uh, the next chapter in what I'm going to try to do with my members. Uh, hopefully you haven't filed any patents because I just got a business idea I'm jotting down right now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Austin, come on now. We need to be buddies. <laughs> no, we're, par we're partners. I'm going to give you 1%. That's that's what's been awesome is, is uh, about this time is to reconnect with industry experts that have more time um, for you, colleagues that have more time for you to get together, connect, figure out how to partner, create relationships, and 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 be able to build referrals off of each other, etc. And and really inspire some creativity. You know, you've done fifty webinars, and I was I was honored to be on on the one with you. Thank you so much you for coming with yeah. us. I love this it. Is a, yeah, it's, it was a good one. It was a good one. Um, Jacqueline's fantastic. I love um, that she built a, um, a whole sales model around the tonality of the skin. Uh, that's very smart. Well, well, you know, we've been able to start this podcast. We've redone our websites. We've um, overhauled our, our operating systems and created much better channels of communication. One thing that was nice about people um, out of the space and working from home was we were able to actually renovate the space as well. We built out. That's what I did too. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm building a studio in my office. We, I literally, I literally just went through that. We, I got a couple of people here with me, tuning in. You know, <laughs> Dory says hi. So, uh, 
we hope to be live streaming this in the future, putting all kinds of different, um, you know, backgrounds with the chroma key, et cetera. And um, it's been fun to flex this old muscle. I used to do a lot of film. I'm so out of practice since I've been selling lasers for 10 years. Um, so it had to grease the wheel a little bit, but. Um, yeah. Oh, it comes back naturally to you, Austin. Come oh, on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, maps. Let's talk about maps. Strategies for reentry. So if, if you're just tuning in, I'm your host, Austin Podowski. This is a State of Aesthetics podcast being hosted on the Virtual Aesthetic Happy Hour, sponsored by Synergy Med Sales and Aesthetic Imaging. We've got the beautiful Dory Suk up here of Inspiration Management, the med spa business coach. So definitely check her out online. We are just rounding out um, what was trending inside of medical aesthetics before COVID and now during COVID. We talked about kind of uh, the grow of MedSpa entrepreneurship, MedSpa startup, and trends that we're seeing and, and how uh, Dory coaches uh, new entry to the space if you're looking to, to open a MedSpa and how she helps make you effective if you have older business uh, principles or practices that were built for a regular uh, reoccurring patient base coming into the office on a regular basis. Now we're going to close this out with talking about MAPS. MAPS is a separate of the four S's that Dory covers in her material, and it, and it really breaks down how to attack COVID now, after, and, and forward moving. So break, break that down for me. What, what does MAPS mean? So MAPS stands for, first of all, actually, this was the very first uh, webinar we did for the COVID when it broke out. And I decided to do an entire series of webinars, not for our members so much, but more for the public. Because I really wanted to target uh, not only, you know, giving the ideas for my members, but I really wanted to share overall with the entire community. So MAPS stands for, the M is mindset. So the first thing we should really check right now is the way we're thinking. Because as I mentioned from Think and Grow Rich, thoughts are extremely powerful. So if you're, if you're still depressed and can't believe what's happening and you're annoyed at everything, you're not going to get anywhere. So you have to get past that. So it was okay to be upset for a little while, but now you need to get going. So that's the mindset. The A is assess is to see what your situation is right now and then start making plans, which is the P. The P in MAPS is planning for your recovery. And then the S is the ultimate success, is you want to come out of this better and stronger than ever before. And that's one thing I'm getting out to everybody is that you should really relaunch, just like we remodeled or you built a studio, I built a studio. You need to come out fresh. You need to come out with a new, like right now, my members are coming out with an entire online process. They're coming out with an entire uh, webinar series, and they're coming out with the actual uh, membership program. So that's all new stuff that they're recovering from this whole thing and launching. And it's going to make such a big noise when they come out because everybody else is probably just reopening where then they're actually reopening. So those are the things that we covered in MAPS. But like you said, one of your webinars, we did about 12 MAPS webinars so far for the public. So if anybody wants to go see those webinars, they can go to either inspirationmanagement.com or they can go to the brand new association I formed called Global Med Spa Association. And you'll find all the MAPS videos also on there. And I'm the medical director for that, that, that association, so I'm joking. Actually, I need to put all your products on there, by the way. We need to talk so Absolutely. I can feature them there for you. But the Global Med Spa Association, you know, when this all happened, Austin, I was sitting here thinking, oh, my gosh, this is where we are right now. This is just so unbelievable. What can I do now? to positively impact the entire community as well as my members. And what can I really do? So that's when I decided to open up the Global Med Spa Association because I really want it to reach globally, not just the U.S. And it has made such a difference to so many people. It really has. I think it's really smart. I love what Stephen Handicides has done with GVAST. The Global I'm going to be working with him. Head. That's right. He's gonna he's gonna do my leap ahead virtually. That's fantastic. We're taking we're taking the leap ahead seminar virtually, so he's gonna be helping me set up the entire thing. 
Steven's a, a, a great guy, fun cat to hang out with. And, and I love what, what he's done with GVAS and, and being able to be a part of it, work with them there. And, and, and in that same vein, right, I think it's really smart that you started this Global Bet Spa Association because never before now than, than today is it important for us to uh, be able to understand how people are doing business internationally, how we're doing business in the States and be able to share that. You know, I think that, that there was a good amount of sharing of protocol clinically um, prior globally, but, but now it's how we're doing business. And, and consumerism is now more manageably tracked from a global scale because it's so, so e-driven, right? Uh, versus before, you'd have pockets based on per capita that are performing different here and there. That's still going to happen, but a, a, a med spa here in the U.S., you know, whether it's in Dallas or New York and a med spa in Italy, they're going to have to employ a lot of the same tactics to keep people engaged, to keep the, those customers a part of the family, make them members. And you know what else we're doing, Austin, with uh, Stephen? Um, he has a new program for doing events. So I'm working with him and, you know, I love doing events for clients uh, in person, of course, where they can make six figures. So I'm thinking to myself, like, how can I help them do events now? Like, if they're still, like, I have right. people in Michigan, they're still closed. So I'm working with Steven and we're going to come up with virtual events that they actually do with their clients. And it's going to be a program that we're going to be promoting. It's going to be ideal. I'm so excited. GVAS that was a, a great beta for my face, my body. It, it, and then when Steven realized what he can do with it from a corporate standpoint internally uh, for businesses, small and large, and then, and then having you get involved and see what you're going to be able to do for your leap aheads, right? And then for your larger clients even, right? That have franchises, multiple chains to be able to, to bring under that, all that training under one environment. And, and now everyone's used to this, right? I was a Zoom zombie for like the first 60 days. Like I loved Zoom. I've always used Zoom. Like people are like, get on a Zoom call. I'll, get, I'll meet you on GoToMeeting. I'm like, dude, I don't dial in pin numbers and hashtag. I hit a button and I go on. And and, and now everybody's on Zoom, but like. I, I uh, have a new word, Austin. We are Zoomaholics. <laughs> yeah, Zoomaholics. Yeah. I'm a Zoomaholic with the empty, yeah. the empty glass of scotch. Yeah, that's funny. And let's give, let's give Jeevas actually, you know, that event is going to be at the end of the month. And I think it would be a great thing for people. If you don't mind, we should give them a little plug. They should go to myfacemybody.com and they should register to go experience this virtual conference. It's amazing. Uh, I actually did a couple of webinars for him too, um, that he's going to be doing. And uh, I think it'll be a very nice thing for people to experience. So go check it out, myfacemybody.com. It's the GBOS conference. Global, Global Virtual Aesthetic Summit. You've got esteemed physicians globally on there giving actual clinical seminars and breakdown of, of the and best, business the best and business business. That's too with with Dory. So there's a chat uh, features that you can actually get in there and chat. Synergy's on there last year. Estee was on there last year. You know, I, I've been advising Stephen with the with the platform, and um, we saw a. a a great uh, amount of lead share from the platform, a lot of engagement um, last year. So, and I think the content is actually going to be available and free. If you sign up for the event at the end of this month, you'll be able to access that until the, the following event at the end of the year. Um, so that's really cool to be able to go back and come through. This is just so much content, so much. Content. Okay. So on maps, first one's mindset, consumer mindset, changed a little bit. We want to shop online. We, we don't want to go everywhere in the world. Certainly for myself, I don't know how fast I'm going to get back into the, to the gym. I've built a home gym, right? My wife figuring out how to cut my hair. I don't know if I'm going to be going to the, to the hairdresser anymore. There's a, there's a couple of places I, I will go on a regular basis, right? But I may think twice before entering a new space, especially if it's a service that I can have in a, a concierge fashion or, or, or deliver to my home. I, I think you know, around med spa, Tom series posted a lot of good content, real self in regards to the consumer reaction. And, and he's had a couple of charts that they put out some studies that they've done. And, and the data initially did show that people were uh, more likely to think twice about scheduling a consult or going in for a aesthetic treatment on the onset of COVID. That's starting to shift. 
and, and trend back to kind of like 75% of where we were before COVID, which is, that's, I think, a, a very important stat. But never before have consumers really wanted to shop the physician that they're, they're going to be giving that business to, that environment they're going to enter, and, you know, those procedures online before they book. And so I think that your lead the charge on webinar, video content, et cetera, is so important. And, and that should be a part of the mindset because that's the consumer mindset. I, I need to validate you online before, before I, I can allow for you to, to um, you know, see me you know, uh, and have me in your space. But I think I, prior to this, you could build rapport with the person by correcting, uh, connecting directly sight unseen with a phone call you know, a single phone call. Now you've got to really build that rapport and allow for Google, YouTube, Instagram to build that rapport for you first. Um, so, so definitely mindset's important. So when we come to A, which is assessing and outlining the business, what's the, the kind of initial uh, attack on assessing the business? So the first thing they really need to assess is their financial situation. So how many months can they really go without having major amount of money coming in if they don't have a membership model already to see what they can do? Um, so we taught everybody to the first thing you do is you just assess, you see what you are, where you are right now, what kind of bills do you have coming in, how much money is coming in, how long can we float? So you really need to assess your human capital to like which team members uh, went away and filed for unemployment, which team members are still on the payroll. So between financial, between the team members, between what marketing are we going to do now? Well, how can we generate revenue now? So those are all part of the entire assessment that you really need to do and see where you are currently with all that. And then, of course, pivot and change. That's what people do is that actually I did a webinar with Stephen to Austin and the webinar was all about innovation the impact and adaptability. So you have to adapt, you have to flex, you have to pivot. But if you're stuck right now and you're not doing anything and you're just feeling sorry for yourself, that's the wrong thing to do. You need to just get up there and go and do the things that you need to do so you can generate the revenue that you need to generate for your business right now. You can't just sit. So assess and make a plan. You gotta make a plan. You don't make a plan, Absolutely. you're just gonna get washed away. Batter up. I think like we've talked about where um, you have to look at payroll costs, you have to look at um, your team. One of the, the things that you can do for those of you that haven't already had any sort of cutback, furlough, layoff, um, that's been unfortunate. Um, and, and those of you that haven't received that PPP loan, one of the things that you can um, definitely do is assess the menu of services that you have. And what I mean by that is looking at your technology. You might have a older asset um, that may even be in a storage closet or facility. You might have an older asset that is just taking up space and square footage in a treatment room that's being underutilized or, or, or underserved that's not generating a profit or even become obsolete to newer technology out there. I would definitely encourage that people not only assess financials first and the metrics of your business, but, but number two, before you get to your people and you have to look at those cutbacks, assess your menu services and assess the technology in your office Right now is one a great time to upgrade into new technology, get a trade in value. Secondly, a, an amazing time to purchase a new device or a new technology for your practice, even if it's certified pre-owned. The combination of IPL and diode in one device or, or, or YAG and something that is um, 1940, uh, 1550, and IPL in one device. I mean, that's that's possible. That's out there for you to have. And if you're going to have a smaller footprint, less people in the, the office, maybe you want a multimodality platform. Maybe you've never moved into a body contouring and you want to purchase, you know, the latest and the greatest in, in body contouring and add that to the repertoire. So assess that technology, whether it's, you know, to liquidate something or upgrade something um, or just to add something new to spice it up and have new content, new things to talk about. Um, I think that's super important. For sure. And, and you know that there are opportunities now like to get great value in, on trade-ins or if you, you know what's sad sometimes to me, Austin, is I go into some med spas 
and I open up a closet and I find a cool sculpting machine stuck in the closet. It's just, it's crazy. It's like, what is this doing here? <laughs> I'm like, call Austin. <laughs> we'll, buy, we'll, we'll buy it. But I mean, every, there was 8,000 of those placed in the U.S., Zeltique did quite a hell of a job with it. And now um, Allergan, which I'm now calling the alligator, they're not the 800 pound gorilla in the room. They're the, the 800 pound alligator. Not, Carrie's, Carrie's is a beautiful woman and she's fantastic um, at what she does. She's also a beast with it. She's not an alligator. But that company is so big and has so much reach now. And they've, you know, Abby has completed that acquisition, which is so fantastic. They've been able to grow that. that that Zeltique got to 8,000 placements. So yes, if you have a Zeltique you're not using, you could sell it. We are not paying top dollar for those assets. We do resell them. I have some people that call us, we give them a, a valuation on the asset and, and we actually end up advising them, keep it for the marketing aspect because that is a constant, that, 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 that's a way to convert clients. You, you're still able to advertise the cool sculpting treatment for somebody new off the street that's seen a billboard. They call into your office looking for the price, um, more information. You bring them in and then you can convert them over to, you know, Sculpt or to Vanquish or even even offer them that that, that combo therapy of, of buyer and ice, right? So we are happy to appraise that equipment for you. Know that um, a lot of people have circulated those in the market and, and you could hang on to it for marketing. But if you're still only marketing cool sculpting, it's time to definitely up the ante and get into some muscle uh, toning and some heat therapy, some RF therapy, typhoo therapies that are out there right now. So plan P, M-A-P, Matt, let, let's talk about that plan. Yep, plan. Gotta have a plan. You gotta have a plan on how you're gonna make money, how you're gonna keep your team busy. And a backup plan for sure. That's what I was talking about. Oh, you have to have that parachute. You gotta have that parachute to save your hiding. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think the planning is I think that's the biggest mistake people make is they have it all in their head instead of writing it down and coming up with that creativity that we were talking about earlier, being different. Don't just do what your neighbor is doing and copy everybody. Now is the time to shine. Now is the time to show the differentiation that you have. And it's so much easier to do it now because people can actually listen because they're sitting around doing almost nothing. Oh, it looks like you're spooling again. Oh, you came back. So if you sit down and you put your plan in writing and have somebody look at it and make sure that you're on the right track, and then start executing. You gotta take action. If you don't implement, then it doesn't do you any good. And that's, I think, where some people get stuck is they just, they have it all up here. They may have it on paper, but then, oh, let's procrastinate a little bit. Maybe tomorrow. No, you ha have to do it today. You need to start taking action today. Absolutely. And, and on planning, um, you know, we, we talked about new strategies that are out there. So again, e-store, being very familiar with telemedicine, pushing people to that e-store, uh, getting familiar with shipping, curbside, uh, to, to round things off, focus on content. Oh, content is key, actually. You know, we had talking about curbside. We, you know, Mother's Day was just recently. Happy Happy Mother's Day, by the way, Dory. Oh, thank you. To your, to your, to your wife as well, yes. And um, the thing is, with Mother's Day, we did an entire campaign for Mother's Day, and we had people, we, we did a setup, like I had everybody do like a tent in their parking lot, and they had people drive up, pick up the gift card and go. We sold thousands of dollars, Austin, every, every spa. They went crazy. People drove up in their car, picked up the gift card for mom and a gift, and drove away. It was like... <laughs> So you got to have that, you, you have had to coach them to go on IG Live, et cetera, to document it. Oh, it, we did the whole thing, everything, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, you just, Zoom, you webinars, just, email you blast. Just, uh, you just gave me another business idea that I got to, I got to jot down here. Oh, oh. Down. I'm going to charge you for this webinar, Austin. <laughs> I already billed you. Or, Insta or Instagram Live, whatever you want to call it. We didn't, we didn't tell everybody about my book. They got to go get my book. Oh, man. Oh, yes, if you don't have Dory's book, it is a fantastic read. You, you definitely got to check it out. 
why don't you show that beautiful cover to us? It's how to make millions with your medical spa. And it's on Amazon right now. We discounted it to only $1. They can go get it. And the reason we did $1, here's another idea for you, Austin. <laughs> Because if you want to leave reviews on Amazon, you can't unless you buy the book. So That's right. we made it because usually I give it away for free. You know that, right? So, I, so we made it $1. You can go on Amazon, get it, but then you have to leave us a review. <laughs> Obviously, Dory is a, a big resource, guys. And she's got you covered, whether you're a visual learner on video, whether you like to read, she, she's got you covered. And, and that's what's great about her service and her brand is that it's omni-channel and, and, and creating a way to engage with people on many different levels, which is exactly what uh, you know our clients in the, in the med spa space need to be doing right now, physicians, et cetera. So last thing in MAPS is success. Um, and, and you know, absolutely, we are here to be successful. We've got both many clients that are still successful in this time and have pivoted, have done the push and pull as you've mentioned, um, and made it happen and are coming out of this much stronger than they were. What, uh, what are some of the, the tools that you're giving your clients to plan for relaunch? You know, is it a focus on safety measures and precautions? What does that look like? What are you coaching right now? Mm -hmm. So we did an entire protocol for reopening from what, having the guests text them when they get in the parking lot so we can go and even open the door for them. We created a sanitation station for the guests when they come in. We gave them a nice little pack that they have where they have a mask with their logos on it. Uh, they have the gloves if they want to wear the gloves. Uh, first, we take them straight to the restrooms to wash their hands, and then they can wear their gloves, and then they are taken to the treatment room. And then what we did is we spaced out the appointments so not we don't have a traffic jam. And then we marked the cute little designs on the floors for standing areas in case you do have two people coming in. So we made different steps where they can go different places. So we did a lot actually with the reopening. And then we created landing pages on the website to give people all the precautions that we're taking and then we have well, quite a few people actually are getting testimonials now from the people that came in. So I made sure that they do that. So when, when somebody comes in, they can tell about their experience. And that way you can use that marketing to be able to send out and say, listen, I came to the med spa. Everything was so clean, was so sanitized. I had my treatment. I didn't see anybody else. I walked in, walked out, and was gone, done. We don't even want to take their money. We want the credit card in the system where they don't even hand us a credit card, Austin. Everything yep. is done. Try to do it as little as possible where they're touching things. That's all very, 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 very good information. I, I think that you covered branding opportunities, space planning opportunities, via marketing still, you know, I mean, that's print material, right? Down to payment and, and ease of access um, to that payment. And so- And a, and a testimonial. <laughs> that, well, that's, I think also very important right now is to show uh, consumers how you're doing business today um, to create that comfortability. So yeah. what we did to Austin is I had them all, when they prepared their places, they went in and all cleaned. I had them all take footage of the entire team cleaning and they did an entire marketing campaign like we're preparing for you. So yeah. it was really good. Well, that and asking your patients to take selfies with, you know, your logotized PPE. I mean, you know, that's that's still a part of the experience. And it's a, it, it just creates that branding for you to hashtag out, you know, to, to their network, et cetera, and learn that referral. Even if, you know, Susie came in for Botox and she's not drinking wine with the girls later and, they compliment her. She says, where'd you, where'd you go? Mouth referral, right? We're getting that digital referral, which is permanent, which more eyes can see, you know, which is fantastic. So, okay, to close this up, Dory is a wealth of information, but she does not work for free uh, because she's no, amazing. And I am expensive. <laughs> That's right. That's right. If you're good at something, do not do it for free and get paid, guys. So anyway, thank you for being my host today. In closing, oh, it was so much fun. Yeah, it's always fun. I'm gonna excuse you to get your glass of wine, but before I do, outlook on the future of aesthetics. 
I mean, I, I break it down for me. Previously, you had a big seminar business. You were in front of your 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 clients. You were able to put them in a room together. By the way, if you've never done one of Dory's seminars, go, but be prepared because she will call you out. If you if there is a weakness in, in in a flaw in your business, she'll find it, but she'll help you fix it. So, without the seminars um, and get, getting a can of uh, med spa talk, uh, business talk from Dory, you're now digital. Do you think we're going to be back at shows again? Um, are you going to host your show? I know that we were excited to, to kind of go that I with know. you. We had to postpone it. Conference. You know, what does that look like? And how, how can we plan for the future of connecting with each other's professionals? I know. It's crazy, isn't it? How things have changed. And um, I, I don't have any plans to travel. You and I lived on airplanes, Austin. And, and my, my Sky Mile number is going down. I was working on my second million. No, they extended it. They ex- they they're going to extend your membership, the level of member again. Membership guys, important. Which I care about that, right? Like with America, yeah. Like with America. I want to fly first class. Exactly. I got an email that said they're extending my membership to like September of next year or something. Is this what airline is that? American. Okay, I'm with Delta. Gotcha. So, gotcha. but anyway, I think to answer your question, though. I think we're going to probably for a little while, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but I think for a little while, we're just going to be doing this, right? Because I don't, I don't see any shows. All the shows have been pushed to like the, from the aesthetic to the global, to all of them really have been pushed to uh, the fall. So I don't know. I think the only way we're going to be able to see each other is doing things like this or, uh, joining like the Jivas with the virtual uh, virtual shows. I'm going definitely virtual. I mean, I'm going to do all my seminars virtually. Uh, we had one coming up in July, which was the leap ahead. I have the millionaire circle coming up. I'm thinking about doing my book seminar online as well. So I'm just going all online for right now until we see what happens because I'm not getting on a plane. <laughs> So, and plus I'm building this beautiful studio, Austin. So I'm just going to have everybody come in to my studio and they're going to see me and hear me and I'm going to get to see them like this. So that's what we're going to have to do for right now. And you get to leverage that content, right? Oh yeah, you know, for sure. Know, I mean, that that's a value to you. For me, I mean, yes, you're right. We, we were living on airplanes and now I've been able to be home and get to see my- You're enjoying your baby. That's right, my three month old. I got to see all three months of that life, right? Like, whereas before it's a weekend here, a weekend there, totally missing that time. So that's been so beautiful and invaluable to me. And, and I'm, I'm sure my wife and my girls too. We actually came back to the office Monday for the first time. So. This is our, our first cast from the new studio. Um, we're working on all kinds of fun stuff with live streaming and casting out the green screen and whatnot. And it's going to be fun to, to do that. And, and what I really enjoy about it is all kinds of people can jump on, right? Uh, we've got, we, we've got Rajani on, on, on the cast with us tuning in right now. Dermoscope, shout out to you guys. Great resources for the industry. Guys, this is Austin Podowski with the State of Aesthetics podcast. We're just rounding it off with Dory Sukup of Inspiration Management. If you, if you didn't tune in before, just kind of tap that button left until you get to the, to the start. We've covered a lot of really, really good content today on what you can do to plan for entry, what you can do to enhance upon your business. And there's still time. Look, this reset, just because it might be ending for certain states or certain people, there is still time um, to slow down, take a step back and look at your business and and look about how you're going to uh, impact your patient base um, in this new age that that, that we're now in. So um, that's extremely exciting. Dory, your outlook is not bleak. You're excited about this time. What do you think is... um, Outside of webinars, digital, et cetera, what do you think this is going to spawn? What do you think this is going to birth? Is, is innovation going to be put back to the providers um, on engagement and less on technology? I mean, what do you, what are you seeing happening in the market in, in the next few years? Well, for myself, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to global markets. As far as our clients, 
I think what they need to focus on right now is building stronger relationships with their clients uh, and give them great value and great experiences, whether it's via virtual or via in person, either way, and truly differentiate themselves from everybody else. I think if people right now, especially physicians, nurse practitioners, entrepreneurs, I think if you step out right now and you truly show people what you are all about and how you can positively impact their lives, they're going to be drawn to you and they're going to want to do business with you. So I think it's all about those relationships. And the more good you do for others, the more good is going to come back to you. If you're just thinking about the money, the money will not come. If you think about your clients and what you can do for them and how you can help them, the money is going to come automatically. So I think it's going to be a lot about relationships and what you can really provide someone. At the end of the day, that, that's really what it's all about, Austin, to me anyway. It's all about relationships. Yeah. I love that sentiment. I, and I think it's spot on. So if you want to tune in and learn more about inspiration management, you can go to inspirationmanagement.com. That is inspirationmanagement.com. Very simple. Just put a little spa inside of oh, inspiration. I just got two-handed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You guys, you guys give it up for Doris Suka. Give it up. Thank you so much for uh, to Austin. Give it up to uh, Austin. No, 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 no. Thanks for tuning in today to the State of Aesthetics podcast. Our guest has been Doris Suka. Uh, out of Daytona, giving you the best med spa business coaching that you can get on the market. Guys, uh, stay tuned for any of her digital content uh, by following her newsletter on inspirationmanagement.com. Most of her content has been come free to your access on her website right now. So you can tune in at any time, 2 o'clock in the morning, 6 a.m., and, and watch a video or two before you get going to just kind of inspire you today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I can't. It's all on YouTube, too, if they want to go to YouTube. Okay, perfect. So, uh, thank you so much, Austin. You. It was such thank a you. pleasure being with you. You are great. Say hi to your entire team for me. I miss you guys. Nick, how's Nick doing? Nick is fantastic. We're doing a uh, dual M sculpting. Not do cool sculpting, do M sculpting on Monday. Ooh. So I'm not going to say any more. Ah. Check it out. I'm, I'm going to tune in. <laughs> Some shirts will be off. I, what I mean is I'm going to have my shirt off. Nick is going to do the uh, buttock treatment. So uh -huh. if you're into that, check, All right. it <laughs> check it out. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so All much, right. George. Bye, Austin. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining All us. Right. God you bless. Too. Take care. Later on. Bye. Okay, guys, that was the State of Aesthetics podcast. I am your host, Austin Podowski. Thanks for tuning in. That was Dory Sukup with Inspiration Management. This podcast will drop live next week on the podcast app, Spotify, or the streaming service of your choice. To find out more about Dory's business, you can check her out online at inspirationmanagement.com. I want to shout out to our sponsors, Synergy Med Sales and Estea Imaging. Synergy Med Sales specializes in the special use sale of special use pre-owned aesthetic equipment. Astea Imaging bringing you the only holographic before and after 3D camera made right here in the US of A. Check us out online. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next time, my laser babies. Thanks so much for tuning in to the State of Aesthetics podcast. Again, I've been your host, Austin Podowski. Stay tuned for our next guests to learn more tools, tips, and tricks on how to navigate the space of aesthetics.